Hey everyone, well today's video we're going to be doing the 41st Tarantula Mythbuster video and we're going to spend a little more time wrapping up all of the Brachypalma genus. I'm going to lump them together because they have very very similar care sheets. The only difference is that of course uh, some size differences, uh, the colors, as well as some of the individual temperaments which I'll be going into for specific death. So, my tea room has become a, a university lecture hall with all these boards here. Okay, so in this Mythbuster video, going through these two boards are going to be the species that are available in the hobby right now. Uh, I'm going to go over how to pronounce the common names and the scientific names. I'll go through over the longevity as mature males and females and their growth rates, uh, their general care sheet, which is pretty much exactly what I said in the Mythbuster video 2, where I covered in depth of the B. smithy, and also Mythbuster video 10 on the B. abopolosum. They fairly like it dry with the water dish, and you don't really need to miss very much, but there's certain Brachypelmas that require a little more humidity than others, so I'll uh, be sure to specify which ones. Again, the individual temperament of the species I've worked with, so everyone knows with uh, Brachypelmas that I own. Uh, the breeding and mating, as well as crossbreeding, because there is a lot of Brachypelmas that are being crossbred. Okay, so now these are the following species of Brachypelma that are available in the hobby. So we have the B. albiceps, commonly called the Mexican gold red rump. It used to be called Brachypelma or Aphonopelma ruinui. I think that's how you spell it, or say it, rather. Then albopolosum. Honduras curly hair, or just simply curly hair. Angustum, which is the Costa Rican red rump, or the Costa Rican red. Brachypelma anitha, which is the Mexican orange knee, or the Mexican giant orange knee. Species very similar to the B. smithy. Brachypelma erratum, the Mexican flame knee. Baumgartenai, the orange beauty, the Bomi, which is the fire leg, Brachypelma emilia, which has several common names, either the Mexican painted red leg, the Mexican red leg, or the Mexican true red leg. A lot of red legs in here. This one here is uh, Epicurum, which is the Yucatan rust rump. It's a species that comes from the rainforest area, so these require a little bit more humid than the others, just like the Angustum. A new species that came recently in the hobby a couple of years ago was uh, Brachypelma kallenbergi, which is a New Mexican species. I don't know the common name of it because it's not always readily available. We have Brachypelma classy, the pink. Brachypelma sabulosum, which is called the Guatemalan red rump. Brachypelma schroderi, the Mexican black velvet. The smithy, of course, the red knee. Brachypelma vagans, either called the Mexican red rump or the black velvet as well. And Brachypelma verdesi which is the Mexican rose gray, formerly Brachypalma pallidum or Aphonopalma pallidum. So that's pretty much what they are. Now let's get on to what they look like. Okay, so now that we established of what kind of species are available in the hobby under the Brachypalma genus, it's time to figure out what kind of species are they. Are they new world terrestrials or are they old world terrestrials? 
Well, as you probably have guessed from most of the common names, they're indeed Mexican species. So these make them New World tarantulas. So New Worlds, I think I've mentioned it before, it's pretty much your locality. Any tarantulas that are from the three American continents, North, Central, and South America, are New World terrestrials. And anything elsewhere, that includes Africa, Asia, Europe, and Australia, not Antarctica, Antarctica doesn't have teas, those are old world species. So because they're new world species, they're not going to be very potent in venom. Most brachypalmas have very low strength of venom, so they're pretty suitable for the beginner. Um, I've never been bitten by any of my teas to find this out, but a lot of the bite reports on brachypalmas are just very similar to what you get from a bee or a hornet sting. Pretty painful, but the venom effects are very minimal compared to, let's say, a pokey or a bite from an HMAC. Alright, so now that we established that, let's get on to the Mythbuster videos of all the ones in this hobby, and I'll spend a little more time on the ones that I've owned. So that way it will really make it personal. Something that really should have crossed my mind, and I'll mention this now before I go on to the B albiceps, is that Brachypelma species, all of them in the hobby, have to be available as captive bred species. Under no circumstance should they ever be sold as wild cots, because wild cots are in the endangered species list, and it can get into serious trouble if you are caught having one. So pretty much, <laughs> I made this as a joke, but it's actually pretty funny and true at the same time. Slings are pretty cheap, uh, with the Vagans being the most cheapest one and the most readily available. Uh, you can get Vagans and also be Abopolosum for as little as 5 to $10, but most of these rare Brachypalmas range at least from $25 to $50. Uh, juveniles will cost you an arm <laughs> between 50 and over. Sub adults will cost you a leg, so somewhere between 100 and to 125. And adult females is your firstborn child. Some of them can be really expensive. Uh, for example, Brachypelma smithy as an adult females can be as high as $250. But when you have species like the Brachypalma bumgartani and the Brachypalma nitha, two of which are very rare Brachypalmas, it sets the price even higher. I don't know who's selling them in Canada, but I'm sure it will likely be at least a good $300 to $500. Maybe less. Okay, so now that I established that, now it's time to get on with the Mythbuster video. So now for the Brachypalma albiceps, the Mexican gold red rump, formerly known as Brachypalma rudnoi. Alright, so in here I have two specimens of my own. I have this unsexed specimen that I got from Jesse during the expo in March. Got this one for pretty cheap. Sorry about that. And I got my adult female in here, Stacy, that I got from Snake Man for Life a couple of years ago. I think two years ago. As you can see, it's a very nice specimen. So pretty much the way I keep Brachypalmas are in critter, large critter keepers. Like this is the one from Hagen. Or you can use the Fenarium Hagen ones for your larger Brachypalmas like the B. Vagans. So, Brachypalma albiceps are fairly large sized tarantulas, though not as large as uh, the Vagans. They can attain a five and a half inch leg span. So, what you're seeing right now is a fully grown adult specimen. They look fairly similar to B. Vagans in the fact that they have the red rump 
and also their legs very similarly colored and very stocky built but what really sets them apart and really makes them beautiful and stand out to most of the bracket palmas is the fact that they have a tan carapace very similar to the ones that you'll see in a bracket palma bony so this is a close-up of my specimen Stacy and she's a beautiful one so the individual temperament of Alpiceps in my experience is that uh, they can be fairly skittish not too bad this female does tend to kick a lot of hairs but she's not as fast as my bony or my classy so you can probably handle the B albiceps just be careful of your individual temperaments because a lot of them can behave aggressive defensively and some can behave really calmly moving over to my other specimen I noticed that she gave at least one or two threat postures but I think she was more into her food responses than other. Uh, this tarantula, uh, for this albiceps, eats a lot. My adult female, not so much. Okay, so now the next one, the B. albopolosum. Okay, so here's the next specimen that I have, it is a Brachypalma albopolosum. Honduras curly hair. Uh, this is my male Kira. They're freshly molted. I never really actually got a good video out of him. Okay, so I'm gonna go attempt to handle uh, my bio ball for you to show you that these are very friendly. Brachypalmas. I can see she's very, very calm. So this is probably one of the tarantulas that I recommend for the beginner who wants to try to handle their teas. Most of these are very, very calm, uh, but they do have a tendency to kick air. And also to poo on you. Okay, I gotta wash my hands. Um, give me a second. Now I'll get you a look at my very old adult female. She's been with me ever since I started collecting teas. I got her as an adult specimen 16 years ago. And surprise, surprise, she's still living. And she's a six inch behemoth. Hey, sweetie. Curly Sue. And she, she's very catatonic. She doesn't bite. She's very gentle. I believe that Abopolosum are more gentle than a B. Smithy. She sometimes kicks a lot of hairs, but in general, they're very slow and moving species. Slow growth rates, too, but uh, this male actually was a, let's see, he was a half inch specimen when I got him at the 2010 Expo, and he's gone fairly quickly, but then again, he is a male. And for this female, I got her as an adult, so they take around five to seven years before they start to get a half an inch to one that's around six inches big. She's very plump, and she's fully healthy. If you want more details on the Brachypalma abopolosum, you can just see the video of my tarantula mythbusters. Number 10, since I go through anything you need to know about the B. albopolosum. Okay, so now we're on the computer on 
by the Goliathus website. This is a picture of a Brachypalma angustum. This is a species I don't have in my collection. So they are pretty much very similar to the Brachypalma vagans, except they have muted colors. These are from Costa Rica and get around a six to seven inch leg span. I don't know about the individual temperaments of these Brachypalmas, so I can't really speak from experience, but they're generally pretty skittish and can be somewhat defensive. So you can see they have the red rump, just like the V-Vagons, as well as the black legs. And they also have somewhat of a distinct triangle, very similar to uh, the B. Emilia. But they can be cared for the same way as the Abapulosum. Okay, so the next species that I'd love to own someday in my collection is a Brachypalma anitha which is simply called the Mexican orange knee or the giant orange knee. As you can see, it bears resemblance to the B. smithy. It has very similar leg patterns and carapace, but I think the only difference between a smithy and a anitha is that the carapace is much more lighter. So compare it to the anitha here and the smithy here you can see it's much more darker in the smithy than the Nita. Temperament wise I don't really know and I can't really speak from experience because I do not own this species but I've heard that they can be somewhat defensive but not too bad. Now the next species I do have these are Brachypalma erratum commonly called the Mexican flame knee another species that gets to having a six and a six and a half inch leg span very similar to the beast smithy they almost look very similar too except they have some very key differences with a aratum you don't really have the tan carapace you probably have a tan edge to it but the really main difference is the legs if you see the patella on Claire which is my female and Leon, my male, although he's not visible that much, you can see that the patellas on this one have like a flame tip on them. So let me just zoom in so you can see better. So notice the flame tips on the patella? Well that's really where the common name comes from. They're not very stocky built as a beast smithy but other than that, they're beautiful. I don't recommend handling them because they're very, very skittish. At least what I've seen from my own two specimens. And they love to kick hairs just like the bee bomi. So I'll show you what a adult looks like in a picture. So this is Tarantula Canada's website, a mature male. Oh yes, all mature males of the Brachypalmas will contain tibial hooks on the first pair of legs as well as bulbous pedipalps as well as a mature female as you can see it doesn't really have the tan carapace as much as the B. smithy or the B. anitha have but you can really see on this picture the flame tip knees on the patella well actually this is called the patella this is the knees but you can really see the flame tip knees and that's how they really came to known as the flame knee. Very beautiful specimen, not very expensive, but they're probably one of the more difficult and harder to come by teas. And I'm just lucky I got two of them, and they both happen to be male and female. <laughs> that was a pretty good buy. I, bu I remember buying these for $35 each. So, uh, very good price for the specimen. This is another species that I would love to own someday. Brachypalm, my friend from California, has actually a few of these in his collection. I'm hoping to someday own some for myself, and you can see why it's a very beautiful species. They kind of look very similar to B. smithy, except that they have the red going all over their body. 
just like what you have on your Brachypelma bomi. Some also believe that it might be a crossbreed between a smithy and a bomi, but to me I don't think so. And it looks to be the real deal. Very nice species. Uh, temperaments, uh, again, I don't really know, but I would say that they can be fairly docile to skittish. And also an avid hair kicker, as most of these brachypelmas are famous for. Alright, so it's the next day, the 14th, hopefully with better lighting. So this is my brachypelma bomi, the Mexican fire lake, and this is another brachypelma that it's on the list. A very cool looking bracket palma. We call these the Mexican fire leg and it's pretty easy to see why it's called the fire leg because you notice that the hairs are full of red on the legs and it has a tan carapace. So temperaments of Bomi. They're very very nervous tees and they are notorious for their hair flicking. That's why you see mine has a bald spot. Now they're fairly quick growing species of the brachys. Uh, this is a three inch juvenile female. Now we're going to look at Katana. She hasn't been reached, uh, featured in my other feeding video because we noticed that she's in pre molt So my specimen, Katana, she is uh, 21 years old. This is another tea that I had in my collection since I was a kid. Come on. As you can see, she's fairly nervous. She can be somewhat defensive too. A very nice looking bracket palma. So I do recommend this for the beginner, but I probably would not suggest handling this one because they are far too nervous and flicky to be handled. Another very beautiful species. Uh, free males can get up to around $250 with slings could go up to at least $25 to $30. Now notice that uh, this bracket palma has two different color morphs. Uh, this one here is the one with the dark form with a darkened carapace. Also kind of looks like a brat become a bumgartenai but it's not. And this is the one with the lighter carapace and they're both the same species. Now don't confuse this species with the Afono palma by Coloradum, which is called the Mexican blood lake. I don't have this specimen, but this is what they look like. They look very similar to the Bibomi in the fact that they have the very similar legs. But the difference is that the Afono palma is a lot smaller than the Bomi, not as bulky as you saw, and also the fact that it has red abdomen hairs that the bomi is lacking. It doesn't have too many red hairs. But hopefully when this girl molts out she's going to be really beautiful to look at. And that's why she hasn't been featured in last week's feeding video. Next up is the B. Emilia, the Mexican painted red leg. So this is my female, three and a half inches, named Emilia. It's very easy to see that she is a walking piece of art, exquisite. So the tarantula is generally black in color, except that the legs are covered in red hairs, so as if someone have painted the red legs on the species, giving it the common name, the Mexican painted red leg. The hairs on the admin are generally black with accented red hairs, but what really sets the species apart from the other members of the genus is the carapace, a tan carapace accented by a black triangle, I must say very beautiful species. Temperament is pretty docile, my specimen has not given any threat postures, though she has been known to kick a little hairs, but not as much as a B. smithy. These are Mexican species coming from the de desert scrublands of Mexico. 
Uh, they do like it fairly humid, but not too much. Um, what I would do, and what Rob C. suggests, is to miss the sides of the cage a little bit and try not to keep the substrate too wet. Bracket palmas do not like wet substrate at all, and you'll find that they'll start climbing the cage uh, if you wet them too much. And just be sure to keep a water dish on them. There is little known about the venom of the species, and it, it is said to be the most venomous member. But I cannot speak from experience. I've never been bitten by any of my tarantulas. But bite reports suggest that it's pretty mild, and it's pretty similar to the bites of the other members. Now the next species on the list, so we've done the albiceps, the anetha, the erratum, amgartanine, bomi, emilia. I did forget to mention that the mature males of the brachypalma emilia have a much more bronze carapace than the mature females. Now the next one up is a brachypalma Epicuranum, which is the Yucatan rust rump. So the Yucatan state of Mexico is a rainforest, so be sure to keep these ones much more humid than most bracket palmas. So other than that, I have reason to believe that they get around having a five to six inch lake span, and they're very identical to the bracket palma wagons in color. As you can see, they have the black legs, uh, the black carapace with a tan outline, and a red rump. And this is what a mature male looks like. As you can see, tibial hooks right here, bulbous pedipalps. And it's kind of hard to ID these species. Alright, so now the next tea we're going to talk about is the Brachypalma Kalenbergi. I don't know what the common name of this species is of yet because it's fairly newly introduced in the hobby. It was discovered by Rudolf in Mexico around four years ago in 2008. So this is pretty much what the specimen looks like. A very nice looking species. It has the red abdomen black legs and a bronze carapace. Very similar to what you see in a beaver desi, except the beaver desi has a black triangle versus the Kalenbergi doesn't. So just to show you what a verdesi looks like, you can see they have very similar coloration. Now I don't really know how big a Kalenbergi yet, uh, I would assume that they would be somewhere between 5 to 6 inches. Temperaments, uh, again, I, this is something I have not experienced because I don't own the species as of yet. But I would assume that these species are docile to fairly skittish and certainly hair kickers. A lot of these brachypalmas are hair kickers. But it's a very nice, cool new addition to this hobby. And I remember. Uh, Dave Avery's Exotics having these species and I should have bought one but at the time I think they were around $90 for a half an inch so it was pretty pricey for me back then. Next up is a Bracket Palma Classy, the Mexican Pink and this is a, one of the cool looking species that's not always often available in the hobby. Well the species is pretty much five to six inches leg span. My petunia is around five inches, so she's pretty much full grown. The colors on this are amazing, especially when they freshly molt. So it's all around a black spider with pinkish orange hairs all over their body, especially on the legs, as well as the abdomen, giving the common name the Mexican pink. Now the temperament of Bracket Palma Classy are very nervous, probably one of the most nervous members of the hobby. So I don't suggest you try to handle these species because they're too fast. So I'll give you an example. Sometimes she kicks hairs, but she's more of a nervous tea than my Bomi is. But I have to say one thing, this tea is a 
fantastic eater and one of the best eaters that I have in my Brachypalma collection. Next to Scarlet, my B. Smithy and my Emilia. Very nice looking species. Uh, this female was around $200 at Tarantula Canada. I was eyeing on this uh, tea for quite a while now and I wanted to have one and lucky enough she was up for sale and I was the first one to buy it. Very beautiful species and a must have in your Brachypelma collection. Yeah, just give you a couple seconds of her so you can appreciate and admire the colors of a Mexican pink. awesome. Now the next species is a Brachypalma sabulosum, the Guatemalan red rump. Now this is a species that I have not owned before. I believe Tarantula Guy 1976 had one, especially I remember that one because in his, one of his earlier videos he was surgically removing uh, a molt from his uh, female. So let's go have a look what they look like. So we have another look-alike. Sabulosum is pretty much identical to the B. Vagans and it's because of that they're really difficult to ID positively. The only difference is that the Vagans comes from Mexico and the US, where there is a Sabulosum comes from Guatemala. So it's called the Guatemalan Red Rump. So because they come from Guatemala, I would assume that they come from the rainforest regions. So I would be sure to give them slightly a little bit more humidity than most of your brachys. So I would assume uh, they would get a 6 to 7 inch leg span, very similar to the B. Vagans, probably in the same temperament. They can be somewhat skittish, maybe even to be defensive. But I would assume they also would love to kick hairs because these are brachypalmas and that's what they do. And their venom is pretty much uh, insig medically insignificant, very similar to a wasp or hornet sting. So that's pretty much all I know about the Sabulosum. Next species up is a Brachypelma schroderi, which is commonly called the Mexican Black Velvet. It is one of the smaller members of the Brachypelma, if probably not the smallest. It can only reach a three and a half to four inch leg span. So pretty much they are jet black, especially as mature males, but some females show a dark brown carapace. Very beautiful looking species. It comes from uh, the Mexico, so keep them fairly dry with a water dish. And their temperaments are probably said to be slightly nervous to docile. And now the most popular of the Brachypelmas are the B. Smithy, the Mexican Red Knee. So for more details, just watch the Tarantula Mythbuster video too. So to reiterate what I said in that video, Brachypelma Smithy are one of the best looking species and probably what inspired everyone to start collecting tarantulas. I know she's been an inspiration to me. So this is Scarlet, my 5 inch female. And Athena, she's another female, roughly around the same size. Oop. You can see they love kicking hairs. And we'll try Scarlet. See how well she is. See, individuals do vary. My female Scarlet is very docile, rarely kick hairs. Athena is the more nervous of the two, and you can see she's a great hair kicker. So Brachypalma smithy, commonly called the Mexican Red Knee, are very beautiful specimens and probably one of the most popular tarantulas in the hobby. Everyone has to at least have one of these. So they have red knees all over their legs. You can see there's a red patch here, red patch here, and one here. Black abdomen, black carapace with a tan outline. 
So here's Athena. She's not freshly molted. So you can see her colors are like an orange color. You can see that some of her carapace colors as well as her um, petapalps are like a little faded. So she's probably going to be due for a molt. That's why I haven't seen her in recent feeding videos. Oh, I gotta close this cage. The hairs are starting to bother me. Yeah, that's what sometimes with brachypalma hairs, uh, they can be a lot bothersome. And I'm actually itching right now. And here is a Scarlet. She's my freshly molded female that molted one or two months ago. As you can see, you really can see the orange red pronounced on patella. A must have, very good beginner species, loves to eat. I definitely recommend this over a rose hair, but they can be somewhat pricey. Half an inch, they generally go for around $20, but for an adult female, they can rack you a bundle between $150 to $200, depending on who's selling it. All right, the next one up is my Brachypalma Vagans, the Mexican Red Rum. There's Annette. She's my inch and a half sling. Very, very skittish. Okay. This tarantula is very lucky to be alive. This is Brad's or Mr. Cookie Monster. Mature male named Gomez. He's around, I would say, a good four and a half, five inches. And this is my seven inch mature female Thagans. She is very defensive and very fat too. As you probably have guessed, uh, she has been mated once with him. The second time wasn't so lucky. She almost killed him. Luckily I was there to save him. So, Bracket Palma Vagans, what can we say about those? Well, these happen to be one of the most readily available Bracket Palmas and certainly one of the cheapest too. Quarter to half inch spiralings are probably as cheap as five or ten dollars you can get. A mature female uh, can round you up to at least a hundred to hundred and twenty five dollars. Now Vagans is the largest member of the genus having a seven to eight inch leg span. Mine is seven inches and she's pretty much full grown. Uh, this specimen is really beautiful. Uh, they are generally all black body. They have somewhat of a tan outline around the carapace and they are full of red hairs, giving it the common name, the Mexican red rump. Species is native to the deserts of Mexico, so they like it fairly dry with a water dish. Although some can tolerate a little bit more humidity than others. But these specimens can also be found in Florida because a lot of hobbyists have let some of the slings out in the wild and they manage to adapt to the surroundings. So you can find now be vagans in Florida. And this is why the state also opposed the HHR 669 law to ban exotic animals in the pet trade. So luckily that didn't pass. So the temperament of these vagans, well, from personal experience, these happen to be one of the most defensive of the genus. So I'll prod my female a bit to show you exactly what she looks like. As you can see, I would not recommend handling her, or vagans for that matter, just be careful. Um, although again, some individuals do vary. Now, I guess I can start to tell you about crossbreeding because Brachypelma vagans are pretty much known to be adaptable to crossbreeding. A lot of people have managed to crossbreed yeah, another hair kicking species, vagans with Verdesi, giving it the Brachypelma Verdesi vagans crossbreed, which is called the Mexican Fantasy, which you'll see my female after I do my Verdesi. And they also have managed to cross a vagans with the abopolosum. And it's pretty much similar to a the abopolosum except it has the red hairs. So it's up to you if you want to crossbreed or not. I certainly don't recommend it and I don't want to because brachypalmas now are endangered species list and we really want to get them in this hobby and especially 
get them as pure bred as possible. But it's a very nice species to look at. It's a recommended for the beginners. Um, just not a good handling tea. And you'll do fine. Hope, hopefully she'll get me a sack one of these days. I'm hoping. Because uh, she started to block off her terrarium. So that must be a good sign. She's pretty fat too. Next one up is a Brachypelma verdesi. The Mexican Rose Gray. This is another tarantula that loves to eat, and it's a very hungry specimen, that too. So this is Kalina. She is my two-inch specimen. I got her as a inch specimen back last year, and now she is around two and a half inches. I suspect that this one might be a male, but Tarantula Canada has an inch and a half females going for $50, so I actually might pick a female in case this one is a male. But I'll show you the pictures of these specimens. They're actually really beautiful. You probably I just showed you earlier in the video. This is what they look like as brachypelmas. They have the red hairs of the abdomen, very similar to B. vagans. So is the black legs and the chunky body. Also, what sets them apart is that they have the black triangle, very similar to the brachypelma Emilia. As far as temperament is concerned, um, my Verdesi right now behaves very defensively, sometimes very skittish, and certainly a hair flicker. So we'll give you a demonstration of what her temperament looks like, or what her is rather. Yeah, hair kicking and sometimes offensive, not too, too bad. But females, especially larger females, start to mellow out and they be can become fairly handleable. Pretty cool. Now, there's one more species I have left to cover. Now, this is the last tea that I have in my Brachypelma collection. This is a hybrid crossbreed of a Vagans and Verdesi, commonly called the Mexican Fantasy Tea. This is a species that's going to get to having a six to seven inch leg span. And it's going to look very identical to uh, the Vagans and Verdesi. Except the temperament of this one is very docile and recommended for the beginners. So I'll just give you a little prod of mine. She rarely kicks hairs. Uh, she's never have once given me a threat posture since I owned her last year. You can probably make out the dark triangle on her. And best one of my best handling teas that I have next to my Avapolosum and my Emilia. And don't forget my Euathlus species red. I love her. So pretty much keep them like your most Brachypelmas, uh, dry substrate with a water dish. So this one is around a two and a half inch female. So I'm just going to give her like a bottle cap water and fill it up. Uh, it seems that she drank her water, had to fill this up. It's got some webs in here, which is pretty cool. Be sure to give her a hide so she can hide some eco-earth. And this here is just a two liter shoebox enclosure by KIS brand. And it's perfect for these species. And I actually have to get some for the Pseudohoplopa species, long-haired, and the King Baboon. Very nice species. As you can see, I can pinch grab her no problem. Very kind of tonic. Will she bite? I don't think so. Very unlikely. Absolutely adorable. So, that's my Mythbuster video of the Brachypelmas. Also, about the matings, they're generally difficult to easy, easy to difficult. It depends on which uh, species you're specifically mating. Um, with Vagans, it happens to be one of the most difficult ones. But the first time it went extremely well. The second time, not as much. But if you can get them mated and get it having a sack, you can probably expect to get around 300 to 500 spiderlings. That's certainly a very good deal.
Cool. So that's my Mythbuster video of the Brachypalma species. And I'm not sure which one I'm going to be doing for the 42nd one, but I'll surprise you guys. So thanks for watching everyone, and hope you enjoy it.